sides. This is the apical bud or the, or the terminal bud. Um, and then these, this terminal bud is covered by these structures here. Scales. scales. And when they fall off, they leave terminal bud scale scars. And you actually can see a little bit of it right here. Can you see that? Yeah. Well, there, there were scales there. You know, notice here that looks different than this. Can you tell what those little bumps are? Lentosols. Yeah. So those are the lentosols that enable oxygen and CO2 to get in and out of the periderm. So we can actually see a lot of things here. We got the terminal bud, the terminal bud scales. Here's where the scales were. And now here's this big structure. That's where something was attached. A leaf? A leaf. So that's a leaf scar. Yes. Okay. So here's the middle of the stem. So you can better see the leaf scar. And everywhere you have a leaf scar, what's this structure that's usually above it? It's a little above it. Well, the node's not a structure. Uh, oh, that's right. An axillary or lateral bud. Exactly. And now some of your stems over here that you've been showing me is, um, this has opposite leaf attachment, which means the axillary buds are opposite. So when one axillary bud starts to grow, the other one does. And so that's why when you look at those branches, you always get this V shape. So anything that has opposite buds these branches come out opposite. Things that have alternate leaf attachment, you see the branches coming off zigzagging. And if you haven't noticed that, go out and look at trees. You know, you're walking through the parking lot or you look, you look around your home if you have trees around there, um, and you can see this. And it's going to get easier when the leaves start falling off. It gets colder and all that. So that's, that's when the stem structure gets easier. Okay, so this is looking at um, two leaf scars. Uh, what would you call this area of the stem, not structure? Node. No. See, I knew if I keep asking, you'd get the right answer. <laughs> then if that's a node, then what is the area from there to there? Internode. That's internode. And then what is this right here? You can see these lines there. That's the terminal bud scale stars, and you can tell that two ways. Um, on this picture and those over there. Um, there are these lines that go all the way around the stem because the terminal bud scales were attached all over the stem. The other thing is, since this tissue was formed one year and this a previous year, notice a change in color. It's a little bit more reddish, and it's the same way in those stems over there. That it, there you can have different grays and tans and reds, and it really is a way to see uh, the difference in growth. And what but the reason I'd like you to do this is, if you look at those stems over there, is sometimes the growth is just a couple of inches in a year, and sometimes it's like two or three feet. So in different years, plants can grow different amounts depending upon how good the conditions are. So the terminal blood scars, that is how you tell how old they are. The terminal blood scars, and the reason is that the terminal bud scales, if I go back to this, the terminal bud scales fall off in spring. And they don't form again until fall. So that means when you're looking between growth, that that was one year until you go up and see the next set of scars again. So at least for the first six or eight years, you can look on the outside of a tree and see how old it is. Well, when the tree gets eight years old or so is, those tissues are they're getting all muddled. You've got ultraviolet light bleaching in. It's, it just doesn't work. But you can count it internally which is where we're going next. Okay, this is just a quick diagram um, that you know, doesn't really show that much more than what we just did, other than that where you see a branch coming off like this, or this, the previous year, the bud would have been there. So where you see these buds, think of those as potential growing points, and they may or may not develop. It depends upon many factors that we'll get to later. The bud falls off the year before? It didn't fall off. The scales fall off. If the bud falls off, it kills the apical meristem. Okay. okay. So the, the scales fall off. In this case, this would be lateral bud scales. But when it starts to grow, well, I'm not going to call that a lateral bud. That's a terminal bud. So, so a terminal bud, don't think of it the tree just has one terminal bud. It is the terminal bud is the active growing point for that stem. So here is the terminal bud for this section. And these would be laterals until they start to grow. 
And this has already started to grow, so here's the terminal bud there, and these are laterals there. They're, they're down the side of this new stem. Same way in a root. If you look at roots we've covered, you'd have the apical meristem at the tip of every root and down the sides. I don't have buds, but I have paracycle, which can form branch roots. Okay, anything on that before we... Okay, this is where I went over this with you before. Um, what we have to think of is, this is a, a major metamorphosis. You're talking about metamorphosis of butterflies and all. Well, this is a metamorphosis of plants about how uh, uh, any tree, so any tree you see around here, that when the tissues were just a few months old or a few weeks, it, the cross-section looks like this. But then the procambium inside each bundle starts to divide by mitosis, and then that starts to trigger cells between the bundles to divide. Well, guess what cells are between the bundles here? What would you guess? Parenchyma. Par par parenchyma is pretty much everywhere. And so parenchyma is the only tissue that is specialized that can, what's the word? Go de-differentiate. De this is de-differentiation of parenchyma. Now you don't have a, you don't have, once you get growth starting, um, you don't have this procambium like little hash mark, because that's what you have here. Once this starts growing, I'm going to have meristematic tissue in a complete circle. And that's when the procambium goes from dormant to dividing, and the parenchyma between the bundles starts to de-differentiate, and that's when you're starting to get this effect I showed you. So that would be the equivalent of what I drew over here. Now let this divide for a year, and this is what you have. And then some of you are asking me, what's the difference between primary and secondary? Well, any tissue that comes from an apical meristem is a primary tissue. Any tissue that comes from a lateral meristem is a secondary tissue. So since this xylem is all in a ring, and the phloem, this bluish, better seen right here, so right there, that blue is secondary phloem. I'm going to call that secondary phloem, secondary xylem. Um, now, look at this right there. Do, do you remember what that looks like? I don't have it more magnified, but what would that dark staining material be there? Fibers. Fibers in the vascular bundle. Would that be a primary tissue or secondary tissue? Mm -hmm. Primary. Primary, because it, it was this. So, so notice the secondary growth is not destroying anything. It, the weird thing is you get this growth or this meristematic tissue in a circle, and it's going to start to lay down cells to the inside and outside. So once you have this, if I go up here, it's going to form a secondary xylem. So secondary xylem to the inside, and it's going to do primary, uh, oops, say secondary phloem to the outside. But in the center is still going to be the pith. And out here is still going to be the cortex, and out here is still going to be the epidermis. But since this gets bigger in diameter, um, the secondary xylem doesn't change position or anything. But what's going to happen to the cortex and epidermis over time? If this tree gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it's going to get smaller and smaller and stretched and pushed and pulled. And that's what you have to envision as we transition and go from here to here to here, that that's why the cortex is going to get thinner and thinner and ultimately disappear. How long does it usually take the cortex and uh, epidermis to rupture or grow? The, the cortex is probably still present after, you know, five or so years, because you, some of you had cross sections of five years old, you can still find the cortex. By the time you're getting five years old, the, the epidermis is likely to be totally gone. But the one-year-old and two-year-old stems, you can still see epidermis on outside of the periderm. And I think I have a picture of that coming up that I can show you. So it's, actually, if you have it, it's easy to recognize. This is some color version. Again, this is posted if you want to see it. I gave you a black and white version in the lab. It's also in the lecture. And the whole purpose of this is so to help you understand this metamorphosis that this is a simplified diagram of this 